listen to you, just deliver my message. Some actors were real life gangsters before they became movie stars. Some were even heavily involved in the Mafia. Danny Trejo, living proof that you can drastically turn your life around, going from a life of crime and violence, including a close call with a gas chamber and beating his drug and alcohol addiction, to then becoming an actor recognised all over the world is a remarkable testament to the possibility of positive change in your life. Life is really tough. It's even tougher if you're stupid. <laughs> Born in 1944 in Los Angeles, Danny is now 79. But as a child, he participated in his first drug deal at seven years old. He was arrested at 10 years old, incarcerated at 12 years old. He was using marijuana at eight, heroin at 12 years old, and cocaine at 18. He would struggle with heroin and alcohol addiction in his life, even overdosing on heroin as a child. I shot heroin. I, people always say, how do you feel on, you don't, at 12 years old, I just, I mean, and it's probably the worst thing that ever happened to me, but it ended up being the best. He was committing armed robberies and was arrested for selling heroin and sentenced to 10 years in prison. The only guy in, in our neighborhood that had any money was the dope dealer, the armed robber. He had stints in some of the most notorious prisons in California from 1959 to 1969, including San Quentin and Folsom. Whilst in prison, he boxed. Boxing was something that Danny had done from a young child. My uncle started me boxing when I was about eight years old. He was fighting golden gloves. He became the prison boxing champion at lightweight and welterweight. In prison, you were a... Uh, Lightweight and welterweight champion. Unbelievable. Yeah. And you said he, professional boxers would come to the prison oh, yeah. to yeah. use you guys as sparring partners. Yeah. Whilst in prison, he met notorious murderer Charles Manson, who he said was a very small man, but had the power to hypnotize you into thinking that you were high on marijuana or heroin. We found out that he could hypnotize you, so we, we let him sleep in front of our cell, and uh, he got us loaded on weed. And he was also a debt collector, along with the drug dealing, and he was involved in, or witnessed, very serious violence, and even murder. He had a close call in prison and escaped the gas chamber after an alleged attack on a prison guard. Then I threw a rock, and, and Lieutenant Hick Gibbons got hit in the head, and Ray Pacheco hit, uh, kicked, a, hit socked a free person, gas chamber. Henry Quijada kicked a, 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 a coach, uh, gas chamber, rock gas chamber. So it was whilst awaiting a possible death sentence that he found God after praying for his life and the life of his friends. It was then in prison in 1969 that he decided to give up crime, give up drink and drugs, and with the help of the 12-step program, he has been clean and sober since 1969. Danny really gives back to the world and has been a substance abuse counselor since 1973 and would regularly talk in prisons and schools to advise people of the perils of crime and drugs. Thank you. What's up? What's up? <laughs> I'm kind of at a loss for words because I, uh, first of all, I, I love doing this. You know, this is one of the things that has kept me out of prison since 1969. The acting career started in 1980. He was an extra on the set of Runaway Train with John Voight and Eric Roberts. When he was noticed by ex-prisoner and now respected crime author Ed Bunker, Bunker recognised Danny from his prison boxing days as they were in the same prison together. Bunker then secured Danny a role as Eric Roberts' boxing trainer and advisor for the movie. He also encouraged the director to give Danny an acting role in the film. It would be his first of many. Danny has now had over 400 acting credits, most notably in Desperado as a knife-wielding hitman, in Quentin Tarantino's From Dust Till Dawn as the bar owner, alongside George Clooney and Harvey Keitel. He was the lead in the ultra-violent movie Machete. He's had numerous cameos in some of my favorite TV series, including Brooklyn Nine-Nine. You seem nervous, why? Uh, global warming. What a bitch, right? <laughs> we all gone drown. Anyways, I'm gonna head to the bathroom for the duration of one conversation. Nope. And Sons of Anarchy. Breaking away from the tough guy role, he starred in the Spy Kids series. The list goes on and on. Danny has also got the record for the actor with the most on-screen deaths at an amazing 71. 
This is probably due to the fact that Danny has a contract with the film studios where he insists that if he plays a bad guy or villain, then his character must die. This is to show that being bad really doesn't pay off. And Danny is definitely one of the good guys, as he showed when he became a real life hero after helping rescue a baby from an overturned car. Rio, helping save a young child trapped in an overturned car. Good morning, eyewitnesses said it appeared a car ran a red light and smashed into another car with a child with special needs and his grandmother inside. Danny Trejo happened to be in the area and when that car flipped, he sprang into action. Actor Danny Trejo turning into a real life action star, helping save a young child after this dramatic car crash in Los Angeles Wednesday. We saw was a lady ran a red light, crashed into that little uh, explorer, flipped it over. The boy and grandmother soon reunited. Three people taken to the hospital after the crash, but luckily none seriously hurt, thanks in no small part to Trejo, who says he was just glad to pay it forward. Everything good that has happened to me has happened as a direct result of helping someone else. Everything. And that's the way I live. John Binden. I was bitten by a dog once. When I was a kid. It was a wire-haired terror. A man with charm, charisma and quick wit. He would have everyone laughing, but he was also a man capable of extreme violence. I saw him hit somebody once in a pub and I thought he was going to go right through the window. And suddenly John went, you know. Crashed. <laughs> he went. We all left rather hurriedly. That's his right hand you've ever seen. You didn't cross him. And he would face a murder trial after a fight to the death with South London villain Johnny Dark. And in one fight, he bit a man's thumb off and carried it around in a matchbox. So, anyway, John came in and he had this matchbox and he kept rattling it like that in front of this particular person and said um, to me, Do you want to know what's in it? So I said, uh, No, John. And he opened it and there was a thumb in it. He had a fight and the guy had stuck his finger in John's mouth and he'd bitten it off, the top joint. As an actor, he would appear in Quadrophenia, a cameo in Get Carter with Michael Caine, one of my favorite British gangster movies. What's that, a python? <laughs> he had larger roles in Poor Cow, directed by Ken Loach, and Performance, which starred Mick Jagger. Sir John Bindham was from Fulham, South West London. Growing up, he had admired men like the Cray Twins, the Richardson brothers, and a man who Bindham really looked up to and respected was legendary prisoner Frank the Mad Axeman Mitchell after spending time with Mitchell in Maidstone Prison. Mitchell was a big influence on Bindham and actually introduced John to the Cray Twins and John would occasionally do jobs for the Cray Twins as muscle for hire. The Craze then famously helped break Frank the Mad Axeman Mitchell out of Dartmoor Prison, only to have him murdered by Freddie Foreman when they deemed him as a threat. John Bindon would regularly fight in the pubs and clubs, hence his nickname Biffo. He could go a lot further than a straight punch up on occasion. His extreme violence was witnessed by his girlfriend Vicky Hodge. I said, I think you're frightened of your father. Well, he was so angry and we were on the fifth, fifth floor and he put me over the balcony and held me by my ankle. So, don't you ever say I'm frightened of my father? And that was like my first experience of real violence. Bindon was the life and soul of parties and get togethers, even being invited to spend time on holiday in Mustique with the Queen's sister, Princess Margaret. She apparently asked to see Bindon's famous party trick. In front of Princess Margaret, Bindon did his famous act of hanging half pint beer mugs by the handles on his erect penis and, and it delighted her she liked that kind of thing and there was a rumor of an affair between the two although princess margaret had denied meeting bindon a photograph proved otherwise bindon's t-shirt reading enjoy cocaine one time bindon was given a job on tour minding led zeppelin but he was sacked after a fight erupted he once even received a Queen's Award for bravery after diving into the River Thames to rescue a man. In 1969, Bindon received a Queen's Award for bravery. He'd plunged into the Thames trying to save a drowning man. Friends heard a more dramatic story. But what I didn't tell you was that he slung the guy in. And then jumped in and saved him. In 1990, Bindon was arrested for murder 
after a fight to the death against South London villain Johnny Dark. The fight happened in Ranley Yacht Club in Fulham. Dark had apparently got on top of Bindon and had stabbed and cut Bindon quite badly. When Bindon, covered in blood, begged for his life, Dark had got up to let Bindon live, only to be stabbed from behind by a friend of Bindon's. Bindon then stabbed Dark in the chest numerous times. Dark died from his injuries. Bindon then fled to Dublin, but handed himself in to the police. At the murder trial, Bindon pleaded not guilty on grounds of self-defence. The prosecution alleged that Bindon had actually been paid 10 grand for the contract killing of Dark. During the trial, Bob Hoskins took the stand as a character witness for Bindon and had quite an effect on the jury. He was smiling across at Bindon, who kept up a very happy and relaxed appearance right throughout the trial, as if confident of his acquittal. Both Bob Hoskins and Bindon made the jury laugh and Hoskins' appearance could well have contributed to the subsequent acquittal of Bindon. Joey Powell was also released from prison. The acquittal also ended seven months in prison for the crazed friend Joe Pyle. He'd been remanded, suspected of helping Bindon escape to Dublin, a charge he's always denied. Without a murder, there was no crime to assist. After the court case, John Bindon's life became a downward spiral. He found that friends would avoid him and his acting career came to an end. He was abusing drugs and he died in 1993 at 50 years old from AIDS. Hi everyone. So thank you for watching. That was part one of a two part video. The second part is going to be real life mafia men that became actors. Uh, so that should be out in the next couple of days. But if you have watched so far, uh, thank you very much for the support. Uh, please feel free to hit the like button, that means a lot to me. Please leave a comment uh, as to what you thought of the video or any other actors or tough guys or fighters you'd like me to do a video about, please leave a comment. Um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed, it means the world to me as well and it really helps with the channel. So, And also a shout out to Russell and Wendy, two of my subscribers who I just bumped into as I was filming this video. So they jumped out of the car and said that they were my subscribers. So Russell, Wendy, shout out to you both and thank you for the support as well. I'll see you all soon.